Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Crop Life Retail Week. I'm Paul Shrimp with Eric Svilligoy once again. Uh, Eric's going to take the chair and, and, and run with it here in a sec. He had some visits last week he wanted to talk about. But I just want to mention last week I had a, a, a meeting with the, uh, the Coalition for the Advancement of Precision Agriculture. And one of the things on the docket was talking about uh, UAVs and UAV regulations. And, and there's still, I, I guess I would just say, even though FAA is working on this, and there's been a lot of excitement about the movement on that front, uh, that the NAAA, the Ag Aviators Association, is extremely concerned about where this is going and is watching this very closely um, in terms of protecting you know, the, the, the safety of, uh, of our pilots that are flying uh, over fields. And of course, we've had uh, a few near misses with uh, with some of the drones that have been out near airports and things like that. So there's there's still a lot of concern. I'm personally concerned. I think a lot about <laughs> about the extensive use of drones, and hopefully they can find a way to make the regulations work. But it is still uh, it's still something that's going to be very much in flux, and is going to be affected by the news. I think of the day on and off uh, over the next few months. So just wanted to share those thoughts, and I'll turn it over to Eric and some of his visits. All right, thanks, Paul. Yeah, last week I had the opportunity to uh, make a trek through Indiana. I was on my way to visit with the folks at Dow AgriSciences. They were holding a media event and uh, pretty much drove pretty much the whole length of Indiana. And uh, up north, the crops looked pretty nice. But as I got further south, um, basically south of Fort Wayne, uh, I saw a lot of flooded fields, a lot of stunted corn. Uh, things look pretty bad. And I know a few weeks ago we mentioned about the fact that crop losses in Indiana could top about $500 million this year. Um, well, I was at the Dow event. One of the gentlemen I talked to was an agronomist from Mycogen Seeds. And uh, he gave this update on what's been going on in the important I states, Illinois, uh, Indiana, and Iowa. My name is Andrew Farrell. I'm a commercial agronomist for Mycogen Seeds. Uh, here in the state of Indiana, supporting growers from uh, basically the Michigan state line all the way down to the Kentucky state line. And today I've talked a little bit about what is the crop condition across the I states, uh, working with my counterparts, other agronomists uh, through Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana. And uh, basically the consensus is the same as you move east to west through the I states, uh, conditions are wet. And it would be uh, kind of an understatement to call it wet, it would be excessively wet. And it's been so really since planting. Um, you know, it, it's, as you move from west to east, from Iowa to Indiana, the crop condition seems to seems to decline. Or, and what I mean by decline is crop variability seems to increase due to excessive rainfall since planting. Um, and I think a lot of that is due to conditions since planting, and you really got to go all the way back to, to planting to, to understand why or to gain a perspective as to why you're seeing corn look the way it does, and why you're seeing that variability. And, uh, you know, out, out in parts of Iowa and western Illinois, they had the opportunity to, to get into the into fields and plant a little bit earlier, kind of in that, um, you know, mid-April time frame because conditions were better. I don't want to say that they were perfect, they were wet, but they weren't as wet as they were here in Indiana. And so they were able to get in, get the crop up, uh, better than what we were. And we got to a point in Indiana where growers kind of got to that point where they said, well, I need to go out and plant corn and beans, which was about the middle of middle of May, which led them to planting into some a little bit wetter conditions. And some will, will admit that too. Been out, they were out planting probably when they shouldn't have been. And so uh, despite planting in wet conditions, we got off to a better start than what we thought, but corn was still pretty variable here in Indiana at least, coming out of the ground. And you couple that with then the, just the excessive rainfall that we've gotten from that point in time till today, you know, the beginning of July, uh, it's just magnified uh, the variability that you see in crop growth. And so, you know, in an hour drive this morning that I had from my home to, to the Diamond Showcase this morning, I saw corn that was, you know, beautiful, tabletop, tasseling here within the last couple of days. Looks like a bumper crop to no more than five miles down the road. Corn knee high, yellow, hasn't had a nitrogen application because conditions haven't been fit for maybe side dress, uh, and, and looking really sad. And then you'll even see fields with both those types of corn all within the same field. So, so highly variable, and it, it seems like in my, my drive that I recently got to make from Indianapolis to Ames, Iowa, and back, 
once you kind of hit that Champaign, uh, Peoria area in Illinois, that's when it, the crop condition starts to improve, but it, it certainly is a little bit less than ideal. And as you come east into Indiana, and the further that you go east, and even the further that you go north into Indiana, uh, the crop condition is pretty poor. Uh, and, you, and the concern is, how much yield have we lost? Is there anything that we can do about it now? And um, what conditions are we going to be facing in the future? So. Uh, it's hard to summarize all that because there's so much that you could talk about. These crop conditions, it's been kind of a perfect storm. Uh, it's been an extreme, if you will. Um, every year's challenging for, for growers, but this year's been especially challenging. And you would, you would classify this as an extreme year due to the excessive rainfall. And so we're, we're worried really a lot about uh, rooting, the ability to access nutrients late season in order to produce a good crop, keep kernels there and to fill kernels and, and corn. Uh, we're worried about leaf diseases starting to already show up, uh, gray leaf spot and northern corn leaf blight are diseases that we typically don't see until closer to the end of July. And out walking fields here over the weekend at the beginning of this week, we're starting to see them show up. And so that's, we've got a long way to go until harvest. So that's a concern. And then a lot of people are really concerned here the last couple weeks is, should I be out applying nitrogen? We've obviously lost a lot of fertilizer nitrogen due to this excessive rainfall. Do I, do I make a, a, a nitrogen rescue treatment? Uh, what's the rate if I do? Is the crop worth saving? Is it worth just taking the insurance check you know, for whatever my insurance program is? You know, a lot of questions surrounding that. And so I guess the broad answer that, that you know, that, that question takes, uh, takes a, a lot of other follow-up questions to help determine that. But uh, the short answer is it's going to take root digs to find out if the, and, and plant digs and seeing if the plant's even still alive to determine whether you're going to be able to make, make a rescue treatment if it's worth salvaging. And then you have to ask, is no, nitrogen going to be your most limiting factor throughout the rest of the year? And how does the cost of nitrogen pencil out? So it's definitely going to be a farm by farm um, prescription, if you will, for, or for treatment, and even at the farm level, it's going to be field by field because farmers have tremendous variability, you know, not just between neighboring farmers and their crop, but within their own crop. So it's, it's not just a short, simple answer. So that was the report from the iSates and uh, from other folks I talked to, growers that uh, were speaking at the Dow event uh, from other neighboring states such as Ohio and Michigan. Uh, the situation is equally bad in parts of their uh, of their neighborhoods as well. So uh, this could be a very rough year, Paul, for crop folks uh, trying to bring their crops in, and uh, we'll have to see what the uh, ultimate fallout of all that is going to end up being at, by the end of the year. Yeah, a lot of challenging decisions this year. We wish you all the, all the best out there and, and, uh, and hope uh, you can make a decision that's best for your particular operation. That's it for this week, uh, this edition of Crop Life Retail Week, and we'll see you next week.